Hello everybody, my name is Michael and I'm a PhD student in the Autonomous Vision Group at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Tübingen, Germany. And today I would like to present to you 3D Deep Learning in Function Space. Before we start, the slides are available at tinycc 3 3D Deep Learning. As we all know, Neural networks excel in 2D computer vision tasks. What this means is that I can take an input image, pass this through a neural network and get task-specific outputs in the 2D domain. This output could for example be optical flow, object masks or semantic segmentations as shown here. But you can ask, is this actually enough for autonomous agents? If we have a look at examples like autonomous robots, self-driving cars or autonomous drones, we can see that they all need to act and navigate in the 3D world. In order to do this safely, we can see that autonomous agents need to reason in 3D. But how does an example task look like where we can test if our neural network understands our 3D world? One example of this is single view reconstruction. For this we take an input image, we again pass this through our neural network, but now the goal is to infer the 3D geometry of this object. Another direction one might go are generative models. Just like in 2D, we start with a latent code sampled from our prior distribution, we put this through our neural network and get realistic samples in the target domain. But in both examples, what is actually the output? And with this, we already arrive at our first research question, how should we represent 3D geometry in learning-based systems? But first, let's have a look at common existing representations. Probably most commonly used are voxels. They are very simple to use, however, you are always restricted to a Manhattan world and also the memory consumption grows cubically with the grid resolution. Another more lightweight alternative are point clouds. Point clouds are fast and easy to use, however, they do not provide any connectivity information so that lossy post-processing is necessary to get the final 3D mesh. Finally, one can also directly regress vertices and faces of a mesh as this is the natural representation of 3D geometry. However, this requires to use a template which is restricting the output topology and which also might lead to self-intersections. If we have a more broader look at existing representations, we can see that they all have pros and cons but what they have in common is that they discretize space, leading to discretization artifacts. In contrast, in our project Occupancy Networks, we propose something different. We propose to learn a function in 3D space instead, which classifies each point in 3D space as being inside or outside the object. The 3D geometry of this object is then exactly the continuous decision boundary of this binary classifier. If we have a closer look at this implicit representation, we can see that it gives us infinite resolution, we can represent arbitrary topologies, and it also directly leads to watertight meshes. Now this all sounds quite cool, but does it actually work? Now we have a look at the previously mentioned task of single view reconstruction. The input is now this image of a chair and the goal is to infer the 3D geometry. Now we first see a voxel based baseline, next a point cloud baseline, then a mesh based baseline And finally, our output. We can see that in contrast to the baselines, 
our method does not suffer from discretization artifacts leading to a smooth watertight mesh. And how about generative models? Here we can see three class-specific variational autoencoders for the classes sofa, chair and car. The latent space interpolations show that we can learn meaningful latent spaces of class-specific 3D geometries. And what about real-world scenarios? We currently need 3D ground truth during training. Now this is actually a problem because we need pairs of input images and 3D objects. For example, for this synthetic chair, it's fine. It's also fine for this synthetic bench. But what do we do and where do we get the 3D ground truth mesh for a real world image? This leads us to our second research question. How can we learn implicit 3D representations without 3D supervision? For this, we somehow need to render our representation because we want to compare it against 2D base ground truth. But first, let's have a closer look at our representation. First, we start with our input image, which we pass through an encoder network to get a latent code Z. We then take our query point in 3D space pass it through our neural network which is conditioned on this latent code Z. We arrive at our first one-dimensional output which is the occupancy probability of this point lying inside or outside the mesh. We add another shallow head of three dimensions which additionally predicts RGB color values. We refer to the first head predicting occupancy probabilities as occupancy network and to the three-dimensional head predicting RGB color values as texture field. But how do we render it? We start with a randomly sampled camera pose and pixel U on the image plane. Our first goal is to find the predict depth. For this we shoot a ray through the sampled pixel U from the camera origin. We then evaluate the occupancy probability of equally spaced points on that ray. Given these evaluations, we can now find the first occupancy change, where the occupancy changes from unoccupied to occupied. We know that the surface of the predicted 3D geometry lies between these two points. We can now further apply the second method to this interval to get the refined estimate of our surface depth d hat. As we know now how we get the predicted depth, we now investigate how we get the predicted RGB color values for a given pixel. We first use our predicted depth to unproject pixel u back into 3D space to the point p hat. Next, we evaluate our texture field at this 3D location to get the predicted RGB color value. We can then simply insert the predicted RGB color value at pixel location U. And this way we obtain our predicted rendering. And how do we train it? We start with our input image and pass it through an encoder network to get our latent code Z. Next, we sample a camera pose and a pixel on the image plane, perform our occupancy evaluations along this ray as we discussed earlier, to get our predicted depth. If we are given depth maps during training, we can now already apply an L1 loss on the predicted depth minus the true depth. Alternatively, we can now take our predicted depth and unproject pixel u back to 3D space to evaluate our texture field to get the predicted RGB color values. Repeating this for all pixels on the image plane, we get our predicted rendering. We can now apply an L1 loss on the predicted image against the true image. We can see that we can train our models with 2D based observations. 
But how do we get the gradients for the depth prediction step? The main idea of our approach is that we derive an analytic expression for the gradient of the depth with respect to the network parameters. The main steps for this is that we first observe that we can express the surface point p hat as a function of the predicted depth d hat along the ray. We also know that the occupancy value at the surface point is exactly tau the threshold value. We can then plug the first formula into the second one and using implicit differentiation we get our analytic expression. This allows us to train our models without 3D supervision. It further gives us an exact formula without any approximation. And finally, we don't need to save any intermediate steps for the backward pass. Now how well does it work? First, we again have a look at the task of single view reconstruction, where the goal is to infer the 3D geometry of an object given a single view. We start with a 2D supervised mesh-based baseline and then our 2D supervised model. Next, we show a 3D supervised mesh-based baseline and then our 2.5D supervised model. While all methods are able to infer plausible 3D geometry, we can see that our methods are not restricted to certain topologies and lead to smooth results. We are further able to predict accurate texture information when we additionally train with the RGB loss. And how about real data? We show the shape, normal and texture prediction of our model trained with multi-view images and sparse depth maps. And here we show the same for another object from the DTU dataset. We can see that our model is able to predict accurate shape, normal and texture information for these real-world scenarios. In summary, we can say that we proposed a novel representation for 3D geometry in learning-based systems. Instead of discretizing the space, we propose to learn a function in 3D space instead, where the decision boundary of this binary classifier gives the 3D geometry. In the second part of the talk, we saw how we can infer these implicit representations without 3D supervision. We believe that 3D deep learning in function space is promising and leads to very cool applications. Thanks a lot for your attention. If you're interested in reading more detailed about our work, please check out these references and also stay tuned because there's more to come. Thanks a lot.